Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Aurora Knife and Tool Truffles. What is so special about this knife? Well, it is uh, essentially, it's got a liner lock in here, but the way that this liner lock is operated is really interesting. The button is on the pivot. And you can see here, you know, what, what's gonna happen? What's it gonna do? Like you push the button and it pushes this? No, when you push the button, it pulls the liner lock back and away. So this is really interesting. I've not seen a knife operate exactly like that. I mean, I've seen uh, button operated liner locks before, but not exactly like this. And man, I gotta say, that works really, really well. You can also use this fuller here to deploy it. Now the benefit to this is not only, you know, wow, that's kind of neat. I've not really seen anything exactly like that. I know that the CRKT has something where you can push the button, right? But it doesn't operate exactly the same way. But the nice thing there is that you can keep your fingers out of the path, right, while you're operating it, which is the same with any button lock. But I just thought, wow, that's neat. I've not seen that before, um, which is cool. You know, uh, we have a lot of stuff in the knife world that we have seen a million times over. And even if we don't need to advance these systems, I'm sure glad that we do. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks so much to Aurora Knife and Tool for sending this in to me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Now, this was fully backed on Kickstarter. They got way more orders than he said his goal was. Um, so that was awesome. Um, I think there are still some options. Depending on when you're watching this video, there's still some options to kind of get in on the, the, you know, the early bird kind of thing. So I'm going to link where you can get this information down in the description, uh, so that you can check this out and any information that's available for it right now. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length is coming in at about eight inches. Full size knife though. Uh, so. So it is a full-size knife. <laughs> Sorry. Blade length is coming in at 3.35 inches. Cutting edge is coming in at three and a quarter. Who makes this, by the way? It's a new OEM called Sikio. Who apparently they are very much not known. And that is, I've never heard of them before. But I will tell you, if this is an example of what they're capable of, uh, they are on par with the other um, you know, high-end Chinese, uh, you know, companies that are manufacturing knives in this territory. This is indistinguishable from companies like um, Kaiser or um, Concept or, uh, you know, Bestec. Like this is, it's the same level of execution. This particular design doesn't have a lot of complexity going on with it outside of the mechanism that controls the lock, but everything is executed very, very well. So, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more from this OEM in the future, but more on that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Uh, any custom scales you see can be found in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the Demco 8010 and the Demco 8020.5, you can see here it's about right in between. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? You can see here much closer to the size of the Spyderco PM2. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the um, Hogue Deca and the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Not quite as tall as the Ritter Hogue, more of the same height as the Deca, but it's just longer. So how is the action? Well, you, you all saw me demonstrate that. It's really good. It's actually really satisfying. And unlike other, I understand this. So the reason is because this is a, a, a button operated liner lock, right? But this break, this detent break, is because we actually have a detent ball in there, which I think maybe you guys can see if I shine some light on it. Yeah, right there, can you see it right up against the top there if we can focus? Yeah. So you actually get that, that break feeling. It's also sliding back down into the closed position is very easy to time. It takes deliberate force. Right, it's not a floppy or loosey goosey button. It takes deliberate force, but it's comfortable to push that button. It's it's pleasant. Why? Because it's bowled out a little bit. You can see right here how they do that. That's just a nice looking way to do that. It's a nice way to you know manipulate the knife. The flipper tab works really well, and you can also it's got a decent detent on it, but you can definitely reverse flick it too. You can also front flip it, 
which I find myself not doing. I forget that that's there, right? The action is very good. And this is a prototype. You can only imagine, you know, the final production pieces, which might have very subtle changes, will be even better. I love this. I think the action is great. This is what I wanted the CRKT thing to be. Yeah, you know, they've got that, you know, super strong whatever in it. But my God, the action on those things sucked. Um, this is really good. And we'll undoubtedly stand up to normal knife tasks, right? I mean, if you're a professional brick chopper in halfer, probably not. Weird occupation, right? But if you use your knife like a normal, responsible human being, you'll probably be just fine. In fact, I see no reason why anyone would not be just fine using something like this, right? The action is great. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco pair of three. Um, it's a little thicker because of the button, but the frame isn't, right? Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This guy is pretty compact, actually fairly close to the Para 3, just a little longer, definitely shorter than the PM2, nowhere near as tall as either, including, you know, the flipper tab. Sorry, that was like such a quick jerky movement. You couldn't actually see what I was trying to say there, but yeah. Um, so what are the materials? Titanium and S35 and no as far as I understand, it's S35VN. It's unmarked, right? Um, but I'm like 99.9% .9 certain. I just read that on the website. I don't see any indication that he's going to use a different steel for the release. I don't really have a problem with that. I don't need it to be MagnaCut. I don't need it to be CPM20CV. S35VN, in my opinion, is... Um, I mean, I can't say it's better than MagnaCut, but I personally prefer it over 20CV anyway, right? I like the balance of edge retention, toughness, ease of maintenance, all that stuff. So, yeah, I think that's great. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. Do we have anything to take a look at on the inside? So it is milled out a little bit uh, for weight reduction. And then this liner goes all the way to the bottom there. There are some diagrams on his website um, that detail the mechanism and how it's all put together, like how the frame is put together. So I'd invite you to check out the website if you want to take a look at that. Um, let's, we, did, we, we didn't weigh it, did we? No, let's go ahead and do that. The weight on the truffles, which is a funny, that name right there is proof that like, it's not only the mechanism, by the way, it weighs 4.2 ounces, you crack your jokes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not just the mechanism, but you know, like we, we've got to the point where like, you know, all the cool names are taken, like Dragon Mayhem and, <laughs> and like, <laughs> like, flame of the phoenix like all all of those the wizards <laughs> the wizards ambition all of the <laughs> all the cool crazy cinematic names are taken so it just calls it the truffles and I, honestly i don't know the story behind that but i was like man i will never ever forget this knife not only because it has an interesting mechanism but because it's got such a contrasting like unassuming name it's the most docile name the truffles, right? Yeah. You're not going to forget it. Clever. Um, and I'm sure the meaning behind it is is interesting as well. I, I'm, I'm certain that this is all detailed on the website. I've just been fascinated with the knife itself, which is what I always do on these videos anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, so 4.2 ounces, I don't think that's a bad weight. Balance on it is, it's a little bit back of the pivot, right? But it's not really that big of a deal. The whole thing just doesn't feel that heavy for being as fairly large as it is. Moving on here into the meat and potatoes. Oh, no, you know, we can't do that yet. We got to measure the blade stock thickness here real quick. So the blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at, let's take a look here real quick. We got 122 thousandths. Yeah, that's what I'm coming up with. So not super duper thick. Okay, meat and potatoes time. So how does the mechanism work? He actually has a full takedown video, which I'll have linked in the description. If you guys want to watch how that works, because it's a little bit weird. Uh, pushing the button and have the, having the liner draw back and away. It's not something that we usually see. I can't say I've ever seen that. So if you want to see the full takedown video, I will link it in the description. It does a way better do job of explaining it than I could, and it's just more convenient for you. The look of this knife is pretty unassuming, right? It's pretty plain. It looks like a knife where if you flipped it over, you would see an exposed frame lock, but it's not there, right? And some people, if you hand this off to them, will have a little bit of trouble figuring out exactly how to disengage it initially. But most people will find it, and I think that's the nice thing about having a big button on a pivot, is that 
it's just it's almost second nature to put your finger there, and we, I don't know why. Because that's not a normal thing. It's not a normal place for a knife lock, but it's really not, you know, a couple of people I've handed this off and they find it in about 10 seconds and then they start playing with it. And it's like, oh, it's, it's just like, it's, 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 it's human nature to manipulate this thing. It works that well. You have a titanium frame that is knife handle shaped and it works. The edges are a little bit sharp right here. It's not like, oh, my hand, I can't. It's not like that, right? Let's not be dramatic about it. Um, but, you know, sometimes you read things on Blade Forms and Reddit and you're like, oh, my God. You know, you, some of these people are apparently being sent to the hospital. It's such a hot spot. No, not really, right? You got to always take what you read there with a grain of salt. You got a lot of... Yeah. A lot of... Theater graduates uh, <laughs> apparently posting on Reddit. Um, not that that's been said about this knife. It's just funny to hear people explain what they consider to be a hot spot. Like it's just really dramatic sometimes. But it is noticeable, right? It's there. You can feel it. But it's not. It's not terrible. It's only under, you know, in circumstances where you're really bearing down on the knife, right? Outside of that, it's it's fine. You got plenty of room unless your hands are absolutely massive. I wear an XL glove, so gents. It's like I always say, I always try to, you know, periodically uh, bring these guys down with me here. Um, if you pride yourself on the fact that you wear an XL glove, I got news for you. That's pretty normal. That doesn't really mean that you have big hands. It just means that Home Depot's figured out how to market to you. Um, if you have two XL sized hands or larger, congratulations, you have big hands. You might not be super duper comfortable on this. I think two XL still fit, right? But a 2XL, a 3XL, that's when it starts to get really uncomfortable. Um, but if your hands are my size or smaller, you're going to be just fine. You're going to be okay. Pocket clip is milled and flat, and it's spoon-shaped at the at the uh, tip, so no big deal there. He's also milled it out for lefties. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, but we have to look at this rectangle. De deal with it, because this way lefties get to carry it, right? I didn't even realize that was there until right before the review, honestly. Um, and that's because I was busy enjoying the knife for how well it functioned. So I'm happy that lefties have an option here. Lefties, you use your index finger. It's really not that, it's just a, a slightly different time. Well, it's not different timing, right? It's just a different experience, but it works just fine, right? Um, so that's great. I love that. This edge is ridiculously thin. That is an aggressive hollow grind. Oh my God. That is thin. Thin. Even a, even a flat grind out, out here, the tip is thin, right? That's a slicer for sure. Straight, and then it, it is a tanto, right? So there is a, there is an abrupt change there, but oh, man, that is thin. It's a satin finish, and I think they did a good job. I, I wish that they offered, you know, I'm hoping that in the future this knife becomes popular enough you can do multiple versions of it. Obviously, the drop version of this, I think they'll all, I think, will all look the same. And that's fine. That's okay. I hope that in the future we see different versions of this because this is really cool. In fact, I hope that he continues to make lots of different knives that are using exactly this mechanism. I, I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's a fun, convenient, utilitarian way to deploy uh, and or manipulate your, your knife, right? If you're a fidget factor person and you like to sit there and flip your knives while you're watching your shows, right? Well, that's great, but at the same time, it couples as a very convenient and safe way to manipulate your knife when you actually go out and use it, and that's really cool. I, I like that. The blade shape, we've seen this before. It's not a, like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that blade shape, but, you know, let's be fair. Kind of running out of options on that front, especially if you want it to be utilitarian. There's only so many blade shapes out there that are going to cater to the majority of people, so... That's fine. I'm glad that he keeps all the logos and everything off it. I don't know if the final production version will have it like this, but man, this sterile look just looks really, really good. Big fan of that. Edges of the uh, the spine are knocked down here. That's great. Would have liked to see some more jimping out here. Not a deal breaker, though. Overall, good functional blade. Um, you know, there's always one person who says putting a big, long fuller or hole in the blade weakens it. The immediate question is, what are you doing with your knife? It weakens it if you're doing something stupid with your knife, right? All I hear is I do dumb things with my knife and I do, I will go out of my way to do anything but cutting tasks with my knife because I've got something to prove to myself or whatever, right? Don't, don't pry with your knives 
and that won't matter. If you cut with your knives, you'll find that your your knives will rarely snap in half. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm happy that 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 uh, you know hole is there. I think it's fine. It adds to manipulation, right? Ease of manipulation. We didn't do the hardware check. Golly, I knew I was missing something. Let's get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Um, so I believe everything is T8 across the board. Big old pivot head there. Yeah, T8, 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 T8. Now there's a little bit of complexity going on on the inside, right? But from what I've looked at, it doesn't look overly complicated. It should be fairly easy to take apart and put back together. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. I love these designs where the, the clip nests in like this, right? It also kind of looks like what Kunwu does, where they make it to where it can accept a milled titanium clip and a wire clip. I don't know if that's actually the case with this, to be honest. But the way that they do this is nice because it's nested completely in there, and then it's one screw. Um, it's nice. And the carry depth is also nice, about medium carry. In and out of the pocket is a breeze because he's done the right thing underneath the clip and then a slant upward, upward while keeping the top of the knife flat and knocked down at the edges. Just good. Just I got no complaints there. I, I think it would be cool to have a texture pattern on here. And maybe in the future he'll do that. Maybe he'll offer some inlay options. I think that would be really cool. It is very straightforward and minimalist looking, and some people like that. And fortunately, this knife has enough character in the mechanism to where it's not like needing some sort of embellishment to give it more memorable character. No, it's it's already unique, right? But I think it would be cool. So there's my two cents there. Um, your stop pin is actually attached to the blade, riding on channels on either side of the uh, titanium, and that offers increased stability and solidity and lockout while maintaining smooth action. And that is exactly what's happening here. Um, so that's great. I don't have any issues there. We have perfect centering. And I, man, guys, I have flipped this knife since I've, because I've had it for a while. I flipped this knife probably at least 500 times. Nothing has budged. Everything's fine, right? And even if it does, put some 242 Loctite on that pivot and you'll be okay. The lockout on this knife is completely and totally solid. No movement. It doesn't matter if I open it light or just, here's a light opening. Nope, doesn't matter. No pivot lash. Very smooth, very smooth in here. Nice detent. Perfect centering. Let's look from here. Perfect. Very nice. I want to say that what he's offered for people like getting in um, early, it's like 180 or 190 bucks, but the, the final price tag is yet to be seen. Um, I think if you keep this, if you keep this ultimately at like 199, if you keep it under two, right at 200 or under, I think this is an incredibly fair price for this, and it makes it super competitive and very interesting. Um, that is, once you cross that $200 line, that's like you're in a, you're in a new territory, right? So the cherry on top here, because this is a utilitarian design, it's a dependable design, obviously functional. It's got the fidget factor, looks good, right? Um, it's, it's all, all that. So when you, when you do something like this and you, you put a fair price tag on it and you keep it in the territory that people expect it to be, or would really like it to be. And when I say people, I mean, people who know and have experienced things in this territory, not people who just, you know, have only bought a few cheap knives at Walmart and just can't comprehend the idea of a knife costing more than $50. No, they got to go on their journey, right? Give them some time to go on their journey and figure it out. But for people who actually know, yeah. We want to see this under 200, and that sounds like a really limiting statement, but I think competition and pricing is obviously extremely important. It gets worse every day. There are so many companies charging $300 for knives that should cost $200, even considering inflation. We got some companies charging $600 for knives that should, that should cost $300, right? Um, so it's kind of, you know, it, it's just a little bit insane. Um, so, you know... Pricing this thing correctly, adding that last little cherry on top is really important. So I hope he keeps it down there. You know, if the thing ends up at 210 or 215, do I think it's still fair? Yes. But I think ideally, if this thing ends up under 200, that's pretty magnificent. This is really cool and I like it a lot. 
I recommend this knife. I think it's very good and it will go on my recommended knives playlist. This was an absolute joy to have in my possession for so long. Um, yeah, check out the links in the description. Check out the disassembly link for this guy. Um, check out their website so that you can see the mechanism all pulled apart. And also, um, so you can find out how to get your hands on this knife. You should also follow Aurora Knife and Tool on Instagram. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.